Hello everyone, and welcome to my Young and Restless official channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Nick asks Phyllis, who is unhappy, what's going on at society? Daniel and Lucy, this is a nightmare, she says, shaking her head. Because her son is being falsely accused of Heather's murder, they have lost the center of their universe and are unable to even grieve. How is this possible? Wonders Nick. According to Phyllis, they had to vacate the apartment because the forensics team wanted to search it. She inquires as to whether he can picture having to inform her grieving grandchild that her father is being falsely accused of murder. What was found in the apartment? Asks Nick. According to Phyllis, they discovered several bloody towels that have been planted there along with Heather's phone. How is it possible? Says Nick. In response, Phyllis says, I'm not sure. Would you mind asking Sharon? Phyllis, Nick, why and R? Why do you think Sharon would know something? Nick says, he should not be naive about Sharon and her abilities. Phyllis advises. She was mentally disturbed, he informed her. Nick claims that Sharon has experienced trauma over the last few weeks, which was brought on by Daniel and Lucy and Faith's accident. She needs to think about her attitude. Phyllis yells that she doesn't give a damn about Sharon's attitude. She is fed up with everyone speculating about Sharon's potential reaction and fretting about her instability. Heather was killed by Sharon. Forever. Nick informs Phyllis that stirring up trouble isn't benefiting anyone. According to Phyllis, Sharon despises Daniel and holds him accountable for Cassie's passing. She killed Heather because she wanted Daniel to experience the same suffering. She is framing Phyllis's kid, who would never harm anyone, in an attempt to save herself. However, she is attempting to cast him in a negative light for taking the life of the lady he desired. According to Nick, this is absurd. Phyllis inquires as to if Sharon informed him that she visited Daniel and Heather's apartment on the evening of Heather's passing. She eventually fessed up to the police, but she didn't tell Lucy or Daniel anything. Nick asks Phyllis whether she has brought this up to Sharon. Phyllis vowed to Daniel that she would not confront that bitch, even if she would love to. That's excellent, adds Nick, because Sharon doesn't need that at the moment. Nick is more concerned with Sharon's feelings, while Phyllis is incensed that her son is being set up and could spend the rest of his life in prison. I'd rather not speak with you. Nick goes to the pub after her. He worries about them both, but Sharon could not have done this. Then Phyllis wonders, who did it? Nick advises her to let Chance do the investigating. Since his research is directly related to her kid, Phyllis is unable to do so. Chance switches on the light at Daniel's flat, and surveys the space. He is looking at a framed picture of Daniel and Summer when two CSI officers enter behind him. He demonstrates to them where he located the phone and towels. He clarifies that there is probably more evidence and that whoever did this was rushing. They must be meticulous and do this correctly. One of the CSI officers eventually informs Chance, we've got something. Daniel is let in by Sharon. How is he doing? She asks, the night you saw Heather, you came to my house. Daniel says, what were you looking for? He asks whether she will answer his inquiry after she allows him in. Sharon claims that she wanted to show Heather and Lucy the same consideration that she had shown him by apologizing. Daniel wonders why she simply showed up at the residence. Heather must have been taken aback. He was, according to Sharon, but she accepted her apology. She inquired as to why she appeared tense. She blurted out that they had a horrible quarrel, almost as if she couldn't contain herself. What more did she say? Asks Daniel, squinting. Sharon doesn't speak much. Daniel wonders why she hasn't told him about this. Sharon didn't want him to remember that they had According been fighting Daniel, the last time that is he had untrue. seen her alive. He bid Heather farewell with a kiss and declared his love for her the last time he saw her. This place is really strange. According to Sharon, Heather was afraid of him. That is simply not feasible, according to Daniel. Daniel advises Sharon to go to the police and explain that Heather was not afraid of him. His tone bothers Sharon. Given that he is battling for his life here, 
Daniel considers it to be affluent. Do the cops suspect him? Wonders Sharon. They do, according to Daniel. He hasn't benefited much from her phony discussion with Heather and her rushing to the police. Sharon merely wanted to assist the cops. Daniel inquires as to how a fictitious dialogue would be beneficial. He finds it extremely difficult to accept that she never considered the possibility that the police would not target him right away. She certainly desired that. Sharon disputes it. Daniel claims that Heather was brutally harmed by someone. Did you do it? Did you cause her harm? Sharon finds it unbelievable that he would ask her that. Daniel claims that he hasn't ever displayed the same level of anger that she has against Heather and Lucy over the previous few weeks, and the police are asking him the same question. Sharon acknowledges she let things to spiral out of control. She regrets what she did and was in agony and outraged. She wanted to apologize because of this. That doesn't necessarily mean that's how it happened, according to Daniel. Was she offended by Heather? Was she attacked by her? He loves a lady, but Sharon would never harm her, much less murder her. She inquires as to whether any fresh information has surfaced or if the police have discovered evidence. Daniel will not engage in such behavior with her. Heather would still be alive if he had gone with his family. He will have to deal with that for the rest of his life. Sharon apologizes. Daniel claims that his daughter is broken and in need of her father. I cannot be imprisoned. Sharon advises him to try to get some calm and sleep. He is acting desperate and irrationally. By coming over here. That's what you're saying, right? Squints Daniel. Sharon assures him that his accusations against her are untrue. Nick tells Phyllis in society that she must quit making such outrageous charges. Phyllis cannot allow her son to be imprisoned. Nick says that Sharon isn't treated fairly. He's so indoctrinated by her. Phyllis laughs. Just leave her alone, says Nick. I mean it. Avoid her. Chance illuminates the floor of Daniel's flat with an ultraviolet lamp to determine the location of the blood pool. He claims that Heather's body was dumped into the river after she was bludgeoned there. He claims to have discovered the murder weapon after shining the light on an octopus statue. When the final autopsy report reveals odd marks on the back of the victim's head, he bags it up. He is confident that they will match. Chance receives a call from Phyllis at that very moment, requesting a meeting. She has information that will be helpful to him. Chance is unsure if he now has the time. He should schedule a time to meet her at Crimson Lights, Phyllis advises. At Crimson Lights, Chance and Phyllis meet in a booth. She claims that since he knows Daniel, he must be aware of his innocence. About the search, she inquires. Chance advises her to let the cops do their job because he is unable to tell her anything. If the police are assembling evidence against her son, Phyllis cannot do that. She claims that Daniel's flat was used to plant the evidence. The night Heather passed away, Sharon saw her at that apartment. She concealed the fact that she had lied. Why doesn't that fact have the same weight as the rest? She is confident that if she digs a little deeper, that fact will reveal Sharon to be the murderer he is searching for. Chance believes that Sharon is incapable of committing murder. You dated her, didn't you? Phyllis sighs. She contends that her son is comparable to this. Phyllis inquires as to whether he is aware of Sharon's prior actions. Chance is aware of what she has done, but he also knows. Her willingness to go to great lengths is well known, particularly when her children are in danger. Thanks for watching if you like this video, so please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and don't miss any updates.